So, Jake had this car, an old Pontiac Grand Prix with metallic blue paint. How he got that car into this country, nobody knew. The only thing he would tell us about it, other than the specs of the engine and how much he worked on it and blah, 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 was that he got it from his mom. And it was one of a kind, the last one he'd say. That's why he kept it safe in the rooftop garage of the Sunset Building, so it would never come to harm. Even though he would drive it like a cowboy every time we saw him. I guess contradictions make us who we are. The other thing Jake constantly went on about was his favorite band. Well, his favorite musician. Well, I mean, second favorite musician, other than our buddy Neil. This guy was named Alex Hongtai. He made a bunch of albums under the name Dirty Beaches a long time ago. It's the only music that would play on the speakers of that Grand Prix. One day, Jake left his wallet at my place. And before I took it back to him, I peeked inside, of course. There, among other eccentric bits of identity and a few dollars, was a picture of Alex Hong Tai that he clipped out of a magazine or got offline. I don't know. The car in the picture looked a lot like Jake's Grand Prix. I mean, obviously it wasn't his Grand Prix, but it looked like the same kind of car, at least from the color and the shape of the window and uh, other little details. You couldn't really see a lot of the car in the picture. But I told a couple of friends about this and we secretly wondered if Jake loved that music because of his mom's car or vice versa. Or maybe he just loves it all and got lucky enough to look cool with the stuff he loved. Either way, I should probably tell you about the monster. Yeah, we were being chased by a monster. <laughs> Maybe I should have started with that. Anyway, nothing we did could stop it. And it had already taken a lot. It, it already took quite a bit from us. We didn't know what to do. And we were stuck on top of the sunset building with nowhere to go but down. We didn't want to lose anymore, but it was looking pretty bleak, to be honest. And Jake, well, Jake hated losing almost as much as he loved that car and his music. This monster, it's hard to describe, other than there was no way to touch it. I mean, you could touch it and then die horribly. There was just no way for us to get our hands on it, to fight it, or... Uh, grab it in any fair way. And while we waited at the rooftop door for it to come through, we all thought of whether to say something motivational, a bad joke, or just goodbye. Nobody knew. And almost immediately, it didn't matter. Because that monster was there now. And while most of us screamed, one of us shouted. Jake got the beast's attention with his strangely cool anger and then sprinted across the roof to his car. And he jumped in the back seat. The monster chased him, of course, and followed him into the car. And in the blink of an eye, he was up in the driver's seat. As soon as the engine of that car roared to life, Jake suddenly had that calm, aloof look that all the boys and girls go crazy for. He put the car into reverse and floored it, obviously confusing the monster and us, and allowing him to get enough speed to break through the barrier on the other side of the garage. On his way past us, I swear he gave a little wink as he saved our lives going backwards at 40 miles an hour.
At least I like to think so. Then he was over the edge. And that was that. The last Grand Prix. Done and done.